<clears throat> I figure most of you you know that, um, and this is particularly true on this island, on the Big Island of, of Hawaii, <clears throat> that um, the more light, you know, the more higher frequencies you're able to uh, pull into your radio set, right, and start running those codes, which are running those frequencies, uh, you're going to get a response from the AI, okay? I'll give you an example. I, I, I live in this little room right here, see? Now I'm being harassed by an AI drone, you know, an artificial finite light bug, right? Trying to distract me. That's what it does, right? It's an endocrine disruptor, which is a circuit breaker, which means it's breaking a motherboard, breaking circuits, which is your central nervous system, right? Now, you, it's a, in other words, these are bugs that represent drama queens. And so, so now I've got these little, these little red inflammatory, which is called information, visual information, inflammation, the codes, see? So as you're experiencing more of what we are instead of what it is, it, it hits you with these little things because it can activate the codes and all of a sudden they appear, right? Or if you will, bugs just come out of nowhere. Where the heck did that come from, right? All I have to do is activate the codes, animate it. Now you experience what it does by virtue of what we are, which isn't what it is. You know how that works. It's all codes, right? And uh, so after I describe what I was experiencing this morning, right, this this is as the frequencies are being accreted and I'm experiencing more of what I am instead of what it is, which isn't because it's dead finite light, then you re realize how it's going to respond to you, right? And these are all counter space moves or what I call counter strikes, Right, because it, it it it's in resistant mode to experience that. Right, so you know we're getting closer here. By how it responds to what we experience, by virtue of codes, encryption codes, right. And uh, <laughs> it's the nature. It's about it's an AI battlefield environment, right. So, um, and and if you go back to how much you're willing to suffer, right, on behalf of the one. Right, breathing fire, right, breathing fire, breathing fire light. We celebrate life with love, and uh, so I was experiencing uh, this video put up by this uh, guy called uh, what was his name? His channel is um, Metal Leo or Leo Metal, you know, Metal Metal, <laughs> Metal L. Um, and he was walking around San Francisco, and I guess this was shot within the last couple of days of showing how apparently this one hotel that is uh, going to renege on a $700 million, uh, you, you know how this works with electrons, inverters, right? Um, and apparently one of the bigger hotels, it's got a, a paper, you know what a note is, right? Like a musical note, which means it's, it's what we used to call hanging on the hook like a, you know, a tie, the noose, the noose around the neck. So you realize how, how it works here when you, remember one drink is too many, a thousand isn't enough, right? So if they don't have the cash, they get the capital. Where are they getting the capital? Well, just look at the birth certificate bond, soul bonds, soul bonding, covalent bonds, molecules bonding, the elemental kingdom. Right, so you know if the system itself is completely corrupted, right? Because in order for them to experience what is in their mind, their security, which is energy, which is their consciousness, requires them. Oh man, I can't lose any more electrons. I got to find another source of an electron. I need more electrons. I need more electrons. So everything is based on electrons because, again, one drink is too many, thousands never enough. So when they realize, oh, I've lost a few electrons, you know, so their bank account goes down a few bucks, they freak. Right? The scarcity of electrons. And so it responds to that. Right? And then this is the polarity drama. Right? Uh, because we're not experiencing being in a state of perfect balance between two poles. Right? To experience three waves. Three and one. You know, the relationship between fire and ice. Thermal gradients. Pressure sensitive information. Pressure sensitive visual information. Right? Cold water. Hot water. Cold pressure. Hot pressure. Right? Cold pressed. <laughs> Pressing close. Taken to a steam, an HVAC. Anyway, seriously, um, 
uh, you know, I left my heart. I left my, I left my right. <laughs> this is where we get into left and right stuff. No, it's just zero. pH zero. Nothing's happened yet. Hey, now we're experiencing electromagnetic spectrum. We got the whole spectrum available to us to do what? Generate plasma waves of what we're going to experience in our mirror, what we just manifested. Right? Pure liquid living crystal-like consciousness. Christic star. Absolute love. Right? And so it hurts. It's, it's very painful because I grew up in, in the Bay Area and I know the importance of that city as it relates to off-planet relationships, right? Um, and, and the history, you know, particularly in, in more modern times, if you want to realize how they write history and overwrite history, right? And layer of one history, holographic stuff, overlays. Uh, but because I've spent so much of my life uh, in nature, particularly through uh, the Sierra Nevada mountains that run from, say, Tehachapi in the Mojave Desert and out down where my dad worked at Edwards Air Force Base all the way up to uh, the Klamath River, you know, off Interstate 5 or California Highway 96 where the Klamath, the six rivers, you know, right there along um, the western side of uh, California and uh, southern Oregon, right? And that, that whole mountain range over to the east from the Modoc that goes all the way down through Lassen, the volcano, and down through the Plumas, then you get down to where Reno is and then the Tahoe, the El Dorado and Stanislaus and go all the way down to the Sierra and all that. Kennedy Meadows, Tuolumne Meadows, Yosemite National Park. That whole mountain range is just full of very precious, right? Uh, you know, that ends up down there, what's called an alluvial fan, right? The geology, the geographical visual information terrain of, uh, say, from between the Sacramento Valley or above that, up by where Davis is, all the way down to Bakersfield. Rich, right? So you saw how, you know, using polymers, right, to, to drive how many, um, how much stuff they were growing. And then, what was it? It used to be, I remember back in the 60s and 70s, they were growing, they were rotating. You know what it is to rotate, spin rotate, right? A vortex. They were spin rotating, uh, six crops, you know, crop circles, rotating six crops per year, okay, of, uh, you know, and what was happening to the aquifers in the soil. I mean, you, when you're using all this stuff, which are synthetics, right, polymers are synthetic. I know that my, my uncle, which was Wallace B. Carruthers, go look him up. Father Nylon, DuPont, same family line, right? Um, that uh, he was uh, he was married to uh, on my father's side um, to um, Aunt Helen, my Aunt Helen on my dad's side. So I knew something about Wallace B. Carruthers and nylon, polymer, synthetic crap, right? And um, I call it crap because of the way that synthetics, frequency, res you know, that's why they went from when I was growing up as a kid, most everything was cotton, 100% cotton. Why cotton? Ask any wildland firefighter. When I was growing up in 1970, we wanted cotton. Why? Because it breathes. That's why. Particularly when you're fighting fire in very hot thermal environments where you got little water, right? And now you're in, into the gate speed. Now you're becoming a breatharian, right? Much like, what's his name? Imhoff, the guy that goes up to Himalaya Mountains and all that. But back to the point here is that he was walking around San Francisco and showing this one particular motel is that people are walking away from their what? Responsibility to pay off the loans. Hey, we invested, we, you know, we, we, we managed to be able to get a whole lot of numbers, the numbers game, the AI numbers game, because that's what it is. Numbers are energy and fire letters. Uh, putting these big hotels up there in downtown San Francisco and the history that's related to Bohemian Grove and all that. And now apparently these hotels start to clo close down. Now, what's going to be interesting is it's a very, from a, from a, you know, you have nature and then you have cities, stuff that's built from raping nature, if you will. Um, and so you have a lot of Victorian stuff there. I've walked through, I've been all over San Francisco and I it's one of the very few structural built uh, cities uh, where they rape stuff from mama and then build this stuff using our energy to do it because that's where it comes from, right? Um, to build these cities. and But it was one of the few cities that I've ever been in 
because of its its artistic mood, the free creative expression of, of a lot of artists that I was there when I was there. And I love, absolutely love the tea gardens in San Francisco Park, Golden Gate Park, right? That was a hopping place during the 1960s. That's a whole other storyline. Maybe one of these days I'll share some stories about folks that were running around with little eyedroppers of LSD that was coming out of UC Berkeley, the Osley Lab, right? Which was actually in Sausalito across the bay there. Um, and, and bringing these droppers around and everybody's putting their tongue out, right? And you'd have thousands of people, boys and girls, teenagers, all lit up having an LSD trip, right? And then they had groups, you know, that would come out and play music, right, on, on Saturdays and Sundays, and it was known as the Free People's Park, right? So there's a lot of history that, that actually has led us up to where we are now. And San Francisco was like ground zero for a lot of this because of who was there, right? So to sort of see this, and if you think of the song, I left my heart in San Francisco, you know, uh, because of how beautiful that place actually is when you think about it in terms of weather. If you've ever been to San Francisco when the fog rolls in, some of them old black and white movies with Humphrey Bogart in the, in the fog that rolls in, the Fisherman's War, right? And then all you got to do is we'll go right across the Golden Gate and hey, now I'm in the Redwoods, magic land, right? And then it's not that far to drive up into the high Sierra Mountains where you can go chasing turtles in the ocean going back down to the beach. So you had a lot of diversity of, uh, of not only weather and burn patterns, but uh, holographic experiences in your mirror that were very beautiful to experience in that particular area, which is why it was so popular, which is why it cost so much money to live in that area, but it depended on when you were there, right? But to see what's going on now, um, as and I walk through those steep streets. Okay, I know what it's like to experience people that were crapping all over the sidewalk. Uh, the city of San Francisco is paying for steam cleaners, guys running along and using steam guns, you know, to get rid of it. Having little uh, porta potties with, with security guards. Okay, I, 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 you wouldn't would believe what it was like walking around here. But yeah, they had port uh, porta potties uh, set up on corners with folks that were actually getting paid to monitor the toilet, right? So that when people came up and wanted to use it, you know, you were checked. It's like being checked in, like, let me check your hat, like in a hotel, I'll check you into the potty, right? And then wait for you to get done and make sure you're waiting your turn, right? And then, of course, you had drug addicts all over the city, parked up tents with needles everywhere and, and folks just laying on the sidewalk, OD'd from heroin or fentanyl, Right? And uh, it was a dead zone, you know, a dead water zone, you know, water is, right? Sonic, sonic tones, you know, sound waves travel through water. And I call it a dead pool zone, dead water, dead spirit, right? And, uh, and, and so th this, this is very painful for me um, because there were a lot of times I enjoyed a lot of very beautiful experiences that I had there at the times that I was there. And of course, most recent was being staying in, in the shelter there when all the COVID stuff was going down and you could, the writing was on the wall. You know what it is, the writing on the wall, the writing on the firewall, the firewall, the shield, right? The firewall, the shield, the Christic shield. Uh, so this is going to be interesting, particularly San Francisco from an American perspective. You know, Bill O'Reilly said the other day, um, San Francisco's going to turn into a ghost town, right? So you know what a ghost town is, right? Body snatchers, shadow beings looking for empty vessels, right? To use as another vehicle to harm others. It's really what it is. You know, they haven't healed, right? So you know how that works. And so there, there certainly was a lot of them in San Francisco when I was there, but probably a lot less than there are now. I don't know. I actually, a little bit ago when I saw that video, thought about going back there to bring my energy in there, right? Um, but, you know, you know how it is when, when folks, it's just like even in this out or other areas, they don't want to be around that energy, right? I'm getting out of here, right? This is not a safe place, right? Because of, uh, how vampiric that energy is when you're in a, a highly dense, dense vampiric energy zone. And then and then coming in there with a buzzsaw with your vortex and 
you know, spin it, you know, it's uh, like the one is in the building or the one is on the ground, right? But there would have to be some compelling reason why I would do that. But this is going to be interesting to see how this goes forward in that particular city because it used to be the formal cap, former capital tied directly to the 49ers, right? The gold and silver, we enter Nevada. But you have all those folks that live right around there, you know, on the outskirts of the city itself that live in really nice homes around there, right? Uh, but their access, for example, getting into downtown of places, stores that are no longer open, but heck, everything is moving to what? E-commerce. Hey, whatever I need, I just order it online, right? And I have it delivered to my house, so I don't even need to go in downtown, right? But here is the other kicker in this. You can imagine a hotel that's no longer got a maintenance crew, which means people are not cleaning the floors, right? Uh, it's no longer, you don't have bug, pest control folks coming in there to make sure the bugs aren't there, right? So you can imagine what's going to happen to these buildings once they become vacant. Right. And then, you know what a booby trap is or traps energy that moves into these places. Right. Another empty vessel, another empty building. Right. So how is security going to work with that? Imagine this, all the security folks that would have to be paid in order to protect the investment in that building. Well, they just dumped their investment. Right. And we're not going to pay on that building. So what is the worth of that, that building now? Is that building worth anything if it's empty? What are they going to put in it? What are they going to replace what was in there with something else? What else is going to go into that structure, right? So now you're going to have a lot of these buildings that are all boarded up that were once, what, retail stores? So what's going to happen to them? This would be interesting now that we have holographic pictures of what San Francisco looked like, say, a year ago what it looked like six months ago, what it looked like two weeks ago, what it looks like now, and say what it looks like in another couple of months, huh? And see the changes that are taking place over time, space, vectors. Because here's something that happened that I'll share with you that just happened about 15, 20 minutes ago. I posted a little comment up on Leo's, Leo the Metal, Metal Leo's channel that was putting this video up there about these hotels that were closing down, right? So I put a comment up there. And I put it in there and then I grabbed the link and I put that link up on Karen's Intel channel, right? To share, hey, this is what's happening in San Francisco according to this guy that's on the ground. Time, space, vectors of what this being based on this particular unit of consciousness that is showing us around town of what's happening. And then you're hearing the native, the narrative, which is the hypertext, right? Hearing the sound and light of the communication. And then what happened was, is that I had thought about grabbing the comment that I had made in that video, right? To grab it, to put in another video of the other guy, which is the California insider that was talking about the widespread homeless people. And then say, okay, I'm going to put this in here for other folks to see. And then when I ha- what happened is I went back to that video that Leo put up and my comment isn't there. Not only was my comment not there, okay, um, I couldn't even make a comment in there yet unless I, what, re-logged in. Oh, I got to log in again. So now I got to log in again. So what happened? It lost track of me. So now my comment isn't in there as if it was never in there. You see how that works with this AI? The comment that was there when I was there was there. Now I come back, it's not there. And in order for me to put a comment in there, I got to log back in. You see how this works with overlays? How this works with uh, speed and torsion field movie players? Particularly when you're online. And why so many folks are beginning to realize, I don't think we want to be online anymore, right? Uh, Running that binary coded cyberspace system, uh, given what's happening with the spirals right now. That's another writing on the wall. See what I'm saying? 
So this is getting interesting. I, I, you know, <laughs> have a good day. Be good to yourselves.